In this video overview, we're going to point out some of the key aspects of component management. We're going to discuss in a little more detail than we have before the component tree order and the combined modes and the effects they have on the composite model that you see in the 3D view. We're going to look at the grayscale management for the 2D grayscale previews and how that can be affected by the layer order. And then finally we're going to finish up by just showing you some of the aspects of changing the heights of components within Aspire. How you can individually change the heights of objects within here and also globally change the height of the entire part. Component visibility is affected by whether you have the component checked or unchecked in the component tree. At the moment all these boxes are unchecked so nothing's visible. If we go over here and check the boxes for the maple leaf and the second maple leaf, I can see that their grayscale previews appear in the 2D view here and that also the parts appear in the 3D view, the actual components themselves, so I can see what we've got as the 3D shape. Now in order to determine what the composite model looks like, that's the result of all the visible components, the software starts at the first one it gets to that's visible and it's going to just combine that with the modeling plane based on its combined mode. So here it's just set to add. Then the second one it gets to it's going to combine with the result of the previous one. So that's also set to add as we can see here by the indication of this icon that looks like an upside down U. In this case that's not giving me the result that I want because I want that second one to merge in with the first. So if I right mouse click on it and go to combine mode I can change its combined mode to merge and now you can see in the 3D view I'm getting the result I'm looking for which is that the two parts are being merged together and whichever area is higher than the other is what I'm going to see in the result in the composite relief. One thing to notice here is that combined mode has no effect on the order of the grayscales and later on in this presentation we'll come to affecting the order of those grayscales and how to manage that. So now let's go ahead and just undraw our two maple leaf components and let's take a look at the order of the parts we've got in here starting at the top and some other things that we may need to do to get our part to work correctly. I'm going to check on the base dome which is our base shape that we've got here. I'm going to check on the border shape and that's said to add to the dome and that's exactly what I want to happen in this case. I want that border shape to add on to the edge part of the dome that we've got there. Next I'm going to switch on the maple leaf and that's set to add two so you can see we're still cascading down from the top to the bottom of the list. Each one of these has been set to add so far and everything looks good. Now if we switch on our next maple leaf which we know we just changed to combine correctly with the maple leaf above it we can see that we have a problem again because that is disappearing into the part. The reason that's disappearing into the part is it's set to merge. So I know that I require that to merge with the other leaf for that to work correctly, but I can see that that's not going to work in the order that I currently have these in the component tree. There are two ways that we could adjust for this situation. The first would be to take our two maple leaves and then group them together to make an individual object which would then be added onto the dome. However, that does mean that I then can't individually edit those without ungrouping them again. The other way to do it is to change the order that we have things in the component tree here. So what I really want to do is for the maple leaves to merge together before anything else happens and then they can be added on to the other components. So if we were to go ahead and select the two maple leaf components and just grab and move those to the top of the list, then what we can see happening now is the fact that we have our first maple leaf and we'll just go ahead and switch these off so we can see how this is happening in order. So we have our first maple leaf here, the second one is being merged with that first maple leaf and then the next component, the dome, is being added to the result of that and so now I have what I was hoping to get. If we come down and click to switch on the border that's added to that, we see we have the banner which again here is being merged through everything else that came before it and then finally the text which is a negative shape and so, but is being subtracted away from the banner. 
Now that means that text must have been created as a raised shape because we can see the result we're getting here is digging down into the banner and it's set to subtract. If we change that combine mode to add, we can see that raising up off the top of our banner. So let's just set that back, right mouse click combine mode to subtract again and we can see that once more being taken away. So there you've seen some of the things that you need to be aware of with regard to the component tree, the order of the list and the different combined modes you use as you work from the top of the list down towards the bottom. As you go through the tutorials you'll see many examples of how this needs to work in different situations and how you can use this list and these functions to your advantage in order to get the result you're looking for. This is a very important aspect of the software to understand if you're planning to do a lot of work with 3D components. Let's take a look now at the component grayscale previews. We've seen how we can take these grayscales and use them to help us select the components and we can even edit them by moving them around or changing their size and we know that that's going to affect the 3D component because it will update to reflect any edits we make to that grayscale. However, in terms of the visibility of the grayscale and which one is more prominent in the 2D view, there is no connection at all to the 3D objects. We've seen what we see in the composite model with the 3D objects is only affected by whether the component is visible in the component tree, the order in the component tree and the combined mode that's set. The grayscale order and visibility is controlled entirely by the 2D layer that the grayscales sit on. Let's come over now, click on the drawing tab and we'll click up to toggle the layer manager and bring that up. We'll show you the effect of the order of the layers on the visibility in the 2D view. We can also show you how if we want to switch off a layer, so if I come up and switch off the banner and text layer, you can see as I switch that on and off that the grayscale for the banner and the text is disappearing because it sits on that 2D layer. That has no effect though on the 3D component I can only change the visibility of that 3D component and therefore the result of the composite model by switching it on and off in the component tree. So we'll switch that grayscale back on again or the layer that has that grayscale uh, back on again. Now the order of the layers is going to affect their prominence in the 2D view. The bottom layer is always going to be the most prominent and you can see the grayscale for the banner and the text sits on top of everything else. And then that's going to work backwards up the layer list here so we can see that the things that are on the top layer are the least prominent and that's the vectors and the grayscale for the dome and the border. The grayscales for the leaf are sitting in the mid ground because that's the mid layer and then the grayscales for the banner and text are the most prominent as I said. The reason for having it in this order is that it's naturally going to be assumed that when you create a new layer, which is typically going to go at the bottom of the list, that the objects you're creating on it, you want to be prominent on top of the things that you already have. If we change the order of the layers, we'll see that that prominence changes too. For instance, if we took the leaf layer and we move it up, then it's now going to be obscured because the border and base layer is prominent over the top of that. So those leaf grayscales are still there, but I can't see them because of the layer order and this one being more prominent than the one that's above it in the list. Let's go ahead and move that leaf layer back down again. Now within an individual layer, you can change the order that you see the grayscales. If we switch off the banner and text layer and the border and base layer, we have our two leaves here. Now you can see the order of the grayscales has no effect on the 3D because in actual fact this is more prominent than this leaf in our 3D view and in the way that we have those components set. For the visualization and selection purpose that we have the grayscales for though, I may want to change this order now and if so I could either click on this one, right mouse click and say move to back or I could have clicked on this one and right mouse clicked and chosen to move to front. Either would have had the same result. And although I can use that tool to say move to back or move to front for objects on the same layer, it wouldn't have an effect on objects that are on different layers because the layer order is still going to be the most important thing in determining which object is going to be displayed so that it um, is prominent over the others. 
Let's hide the layer manager now. Click on the modeling tab. I'm going to go into an ISO view in the 3D view. And the last thing I'd like to talk about in this overview video is how to change the heights of the components. First I'll show you how to individually change the height of a component and then we'll look at how we can globally change the height of our composite model or essentially all the visible components that we currently have. First if I want to come in and select one of the components if we click on the leaf here I can come over to the properties, uh, the component properties icon which is the wrench and within that I can individually manipulate the height of that particular shape. I can use the slider bar to slide that up and you can see if you look in the 3D view how that's being updated as I change that slider bar or you could type in a very specific value in order to get the change that you need for a particular height of a specific component. So this is a good example of why the order and the way we manage our component tree can be so important. You'll remember back earlier on in this presentation I talked about the fact that one solution to sorting out the maple leaf sitting on top of the dome would be to group them together but that wouldn't allow me to individually edit the component in the way I'm doing now. So that's why where possible it's good that you want to keep components as individual objects. So as well as editing the individual height of a component by selecting it and changing the component properties menu here if we close this I can also edit the global height of all my components or the composite model. If we come across and click on the icon to scale Z height of model it's going to calculate the current height of the part and I can change that either by using the scale height slider here and changing that and you can see that all my components within the part will be proportionally scaled up or down depending what I choose in there or I could if I needed to specify a specific value click on this button to set exact height we could come in type in a specific value and hit apply and that's going to scale all the components up to that specific height that we set there. So that concludes this tutorial overview on how to manage different aspects of the components.